Hello. My name is Truman Story, and I would like to start my presentation. Ever since I was a child, I've loved science. Yes, science, particularly astronomy and biology. I've read and watched numerous books and TV programs about them. This might sound crazy, but at one point, I even had a thing called my future inventions notebook, where I wrote my imaginary inventions, things like time machines or drones in the same shape and size as insects. It was a bit crazy, I have to admit, but it was so much fun. But as I grew up, I didn't have time to do that anymore. I was playing football and studying English quite seriously since I was in kindergarten and those things consumed most of my time. During those days, I had to memorize unbelievable amounts of English vocabulary for an English exam, and it was quite painful for my young self. And then suddenly, one idea came to me. Is there any way to remember things easily? Can I just remember every single word while I'm sleeping? Or can I invent machines for that? I think this was the moment everything started. I found my interest in brain science. Time passed, but my passion didn't change. Through science classes and Rosakuen in Futsubi, I got more and more into brain science. After entering Shukuko, I came, I came across a great chance a national research support program for high school students. I applied for it, and thankfully, I was given an opportunity to do my own research. My eyes were shining with all the possibilities ahead of me. But for my research topic, I eventually did not end up studying what I formerly wanted to, which is memory and sleep. So I was a bit nervous. But I eventually started my research with a topic that is still related to the brain, but a little different. That's because I thought that research was suitable for beginners like me, and I can learn many basic and important skills. The theme of my research is analysis of the pharmacological effect of the anesthetic protocol on astrocyte activity. Okay, you don't have any idea what it is, right? But don't worry, I will explain it. Very soon. So, first, let's think about anesthesia. I think most of you have once experienced it at hospital or dentist. It directly affects our consciousness and protects us from feeling pain during surgery. But surprisingly, we don't know much about it. How do they work? Why do they work? There is so much space for research. As anesthesia affects people's minds, it's easy to imagine that they interact with brain cells. So the relationship between anesthesia and neurons, cells that control every, every electrical signal in our brain, has been studied a lot in the past. But in reality, there are many types of brain cells other than neurons in our brain, like this. And these cells are called glial cells. The problem is that the relationship between anesthesia and these glial cells hasn't been searched fully, as these cells don't work like neurons' electrical signals, and have been thought of like only supportive role of neurons in our brain but until recently. About 30 years ago, an innovative technique called calcium imaging was invented. This technique uh, makes it possible to see the activity of cells by observing changes in calcium ions inside cells. So calcium, calcium ions inside cells. So by using this technique, 
that has been shown that cells other than neurons, uh, especially astrocytes, are actually active. Okay, maybe what I talked about so far does not sound familiar to you at all. But don't worry, this is not what I really want to tell you today. So, research related to the brain is one of the most recent and also one of the most hottest and fastest growing scientific fields. In recent years, research of Alzheimer's disease has become famous. And I feel that research of the brain itself is gradually getting familiar to us. I believe that the further understanding of our brain, which controls our intellectual thoughts, like memories and emotions, is really important because it directly relates to both physical and mental well-being for us. There's one thing I learned through my journey about this such a mysterious organ. I found out that using the word frontier or forefront for research is inappropriate. There's no boundaries between beginners and professionals. I realized this for the first time after I started my research. In the first place, researching is an activity to explore things that nobody on this planet knows about. In other words, researching is an activity to objectively question yourself and recognize how much you know about something and what you don't know. You have to understand your blindness and accept it. I've spent three long years to realize this, but I'm truly glad that I could notice it before entering university. So, through this research activity that I'm most interested in, I dug deeper into my inner world. But at the same time, I was doing another activity to broaden my view. That is online seminars. I participated in many online seminars, which became much easier to participate uh, thanks to the spread of online lessons as a result of the corona pandemic. But to be honest, all of the lectures were extremely difficult, and they required high-level background knowledge. But still, I continued to push myself hard and attend to them. The only motivation was my interest in science I had had since I was a kid. But as a result, it turned out that I gained invaluable opportunities, more precious than that gathering knowledge. I was able to speak with many researchers from various countries who were many steps ahead of me. Because they were online, I was able to ask many things via email after the seminars. Not only questions about the lectures, but also about the things that I had originally wondered about. Some researchers taught me things by writing down my question points so that even high school students like me could understand them. And other researchers recommended some papers that met my request. One of them is working at a laboratory in England, and I actually went there last month as he invited me. Everything in England, from the design of the building to the division of work, and the expertise within the institute, everything was different from Japan. But the most valuable thing I experienced there was not the tour of the facility. That is, I got to meet two graduate students from graduate school of Tokyo University, who also came there for the same purpose as mine. And I was able to give a presentation and have discussions with them, and a prominent researcher on each of our own research. I did not expect that I would give any presentations, so I shuddered when the researcher suddenly said, OK, next we are going to have a presentation from Mr. Missouri, shall we? I was terribly surprised with the unexpected situation, but I eventually did, though my voice was shaking. However, I felt small change occurred in my values. I realized that my study was still incomplete as a research, 
And at the same time, I saw a glimpse of what it means to be a researcher at school. I learned that by meeting people outside of their understandings, people can encounter more new ideas and evolve their values further than just by reading any books. That's a book. There are some things I gained through my journey of research. One is the ability to create opportunities. The position of high school student is really unique because even though we're still in a period that we don't need to have a specialty, there are many opportunities available to look into specialized fields. Therefore, chances come along quite a lot, even if you don't try to create them. But when you want to deepen your interests, you have to act by yourself for further chances. I now think that my application to the research program right after I'm entering high school, and my active participation in online seminars, even after starting my own research, contributed to the development of this ability in the end. And the effort to create chances always produces a certain number of new chances. Through online seminars, I was able to obtain passport to new possibilities, connection with people. I also learned some things that I can say about your life. High school students are really fortunate in many aspects. That is because, although there are many opportunities provided, the number of those who really seize them is actually very limited, like the research program I'm doing. Maybe this is because most people are busy studying or doing club activities during high school. But in the first place, how many of you know about this program? And how many of you really think that you want to give a shot at something new after recognizing the existence of such things? I guess many of you are interested, but can't actually take action. This may be partly due to anxiety as doing things as people around you don't normally do. But when you think about your future success, there are moments that you have to make decisions only by yourself. And, well, if you just carry out the tasks given in school life, you might end your life in mediocrity. Doing the same things as those around you is a prerequisite and you have to cultivate your original field upon them. And I believe that the period between junior high school and high school is the richest time for this. Well, certain level of solitude is inevitable as cultivating your originality means finding your own ways that are different from others. But if you succeed in controlling your solitude, and obtain your own pace over doing things, you'll be able to go anywhere without losing yourself. Research might be a great example if you think of it as deepening your original interest, which is similar to cultivating your originality. Furthermore, I think that I've spent more multitasking days than average students in the school. And I'm satisfied that I could use my time fully for these three years. But surely, research activity was not always fun. I had to spend many hours on data analysis and think about next experiments, sometimes by sacrificing my sleep. So, studying school subjects, playing football at football club, and doing my own research at the same time was awfully tough. But there are several ways that multitasking saved me. That is, even if you fail in one field, you can recover from your, men from your mental distress while you're concentrating on other fields. For example, when I get a bad score at the school exam, I overcame it 
while I was busy doing my own research. Uh, when I couldn't get good results at the experiment, I overcame it while I was busy playing football. I believe that the easiest and most effective way to overcome your mental distress is by accepting it over a long period of time and never accept it right away. So, in this way, you can create many chances by multitasking and also learn things without getting too hurt from each failure. Finally, looking back, I can say that my short flight so far has been made up of many different side roads that are not just for studying at school. But side roads may be the most important factor for individuals' originality. You can't rely on others, as it is a road only for you. But I believe that when people face big junctions in life, the existence of their side roads can be very powerful. But lastly, there's one thing I have to remind you. In high school life, side roads only shine when the main road is completed. You might get bored or lose passion in doing what you do every day at school, as it's always in competition with many others under strict rules. But the main road is an important cornerstone of the side roads. As a member of KO, while walking steadily on the main road, I hope each one of you will find your original, fantastic side roads. Thank you very much.